The tweet says, what is the dumbest or most unnecessary death or sacrifice in TV and film history? I have a lot of answers for this one. Killing off Darwin and X-Men First Class will forever be one of the stupidest movie death scenes of all time, because if you're unaware, his mutant ability is that he has the ability to adapt and survive to literally anything that's thrown at him. That means that Darwin is essentially invincible, but yet in the movie, Shaw walks up to him and kills him like it's absolutely nothing, but to make it worse, he's literally one of the only characters in the entire film to die. Now, people defend this death by saying, oh, it's a movie that had to do it to show how powerful the villain Shaw really was, but it's stupid for two reasons. First of all, you could have just introduced any other super powerful X-Men and had them killed off to show how powerful the villain was. And secondly, if you look at the comics, Darwin survived some of the most insane things I've ever seen in my life. Like in one comic, he's fighting the Hulk and he realizes he's in over his head and he really can't beat the Hulk. How does he adapt to survive the situation? He literally just teleports out of there because he realizes he's going to die, so his body just moves him away from the Hulk. But it gets even crazier than that because another time in the comics, he was fighting Hela, who's the goddess of death, and she used the hand of glory which literally instantly kills anything she wants it to except darwin whose ability to adapt and survive literally turned him into a more superior god of death and this made him immune to hella's hand of glory attack and actually let him defeat her in the battle instead but no in x-men first class he's killed off in like 10 minutes of screen time it's so dumb man of steel jonathan kent dies to protect his son's secret of being superman because he doesn't think the world is ready to see his true identity yet and it's supposed to be this really touching and deep moment but i'm sorry the death scene is one of the most ironically hilarious deaths i've ever seen in a movie. First of all, you'll never convince me that Superman just could not have saved his dad super quickly so fast that nobody would have seen what or who did it and they wouldn't even know Superman existed still. I'm sorry, but this final frame of him right here before he gets just whisked away into nothingness is just so stupidly funny to me. I kind of despise Fred Weasley's death and the end of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part two. Like, I understand what J.K. Rowling was going for. She wanted the war to have casualties to show that, hey, this is war. The people are gonna die. I wish they just killed off one of the older professors instead or at least give Fred like a legendary moment where he's going out making a huge sacrifice to protect maybe Ron or Bill or someone else. No, in the movie, he's literally killed off screen and the characters are sad about it for like 30 seconds total. And I understand there's a lot happening in the final battle. You can't really spend a ton of time on this. But I don't know, I think like one scene at the end after the battle before you get to the epilogue of having like a Fred funeral could have been really touching. I give him like the Tony Stark treatment from the end of Endgame. But no, he gets the Black Widow treatment where everybody completely forgets about him because there's so much other stuff going on. So I wish they just didn't kill him off in this. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not the biggest fan of the Star Wars prequels but i do absolutely love revenge of the sith i think that is a masterpiece of a movie with everything besides padme dying of sadness at the end of it now listen i understand this is technically something that can and does happen in real life people die of a broken heart when their long-term partner dies or something like that and obviously this movie had to kill off padme because she's not floating around in the original trilogy so they had to do something but i just wish they did anything else besides this i'm sorry the scene is just so goofy in my opinion like having Anakin going too far and maybe just force stroking her and she dies in this scene or doing something else that maybe accidentally kills her and that leading into more of his grief could have been so much more effective in my opinion. But because this is the death that we actually got in the movie, I'm going to choose to believe the conspiracy theory that she didn't actually die of sadness and that the medical droids are just terrible at their jobs and they're trying to cover up their malpractice. Now I have a ton of problems with Secret Invasion, but perhaps one of the most offensively bad decisions they made with this show happened in episode one when they decided we're going to kill off Maria Hill for pointless shock value. Maria Hill has has always been an amazing supporting character, but she never really got the time to shine because she's always just overshadowed by the other Avengers or heroes in her movies. But after seeing her in all these different movies in the supporting role, I was really excited to see her and Nick Fury teaming up in Secret Invasion and we finally give this character more to do. But no, they just kill her off in episode one and it's not even like Phil Coulson's death in the Avengers that's like the thing that brings everyone together to go stop the evil forces. Like yeah, Nick Fury is sad about it, but it's pretty much completely forgotten by episode three because of all the other garbage happening in Secret Invasion. It really reminds me of Fred Weasley's death. Like it's here for shock value and everybody in the movie and show just forget about it right after. Let me know in the comments your picks from other movies and TV shows that I did not include in this that have some of the stupidest deaths of all time and click above me to watch another video on the channel.